Hello everyone. This time around, I want to talk a little bit about time travel in fiction. Uh, otherwise known as, so you want to write a time travel story. Uh, there are some things that writers of time travel stories often get wrong, and the biggest one is internal consistency, where the mechanics of time travel aren't really thought out carefully before the story is written, and then uh, you end up with issues down the road. This is particularly noticeable in episodic stories or a series of, of whatever kind, television shows or whatever. So the first thing you need to do before you write your time travel story is work out what the mechanics of time travel are in your universe. And unfortunately, you can't rely on the real universe we live in to give you any clues. As far as we can tell, based on what we know currently, time travel in the real world is not possible. And that means that it doesn't matter what mechanic you pick, it's not going to line up necessarily with our understanding of physics. However, that doesn't mean you won't be uh, uh, well served by keeping the uh, your mechanic for time travel something that might seem to fit with what we know of physics. That's especially true if you're writing a science fiction time travel story, but time travel need not be purely a science fiction situation. It can just as easily work in a fantasy setting with magic or some other uh, cause. So uh, if you're writing a fantasy story, then you don't have to work as hard to make the time travel mechanism make sense. You can just hand wave that a bit and say magic allows it. But either way, you still have to make sure that everything is internally logically consistent. If it's not, you're going to trip up your readers and possibly yourself and it's going to cause trouble and it's going to make your story either harder to write or not hang together as well. Now there's a few things that you should consider carefully when you're coming up with your time travel mechanic. First, you need to figure out, is it even possible to change the past? If the past can be changed, what are the consequences? How does it work? What happens if you cause a paradox? What happens if something gets critical, gets changed, and now your time machine doesn't exist. Is there a velocity at which changes work their way up the timeline? Uh, is there, is, is any change to the future instantaneous? Uh, does traveling back in time actually just cause a branching timeline and you don't actually affect your own personal history? There's any number of, of things that you need to consider, and you need to consider them carefully. Uh, you also need to consider, if the timeline changes, who remembers, if anyone? And here's the, the, the key thing. If you go back in time and you change the timeline, then you should remember, logically, the changed timeline, not the original. So how would you know that you changed it? And that's, uh, that's something that you need to consider. I read one story that involved time travel, and that particular situation was, in fact, thought through. And there was a mechanism built into the universe where any, if anyone changed the timeline, then at the very least, that person would be required to remember it, remember the original. I can't remember the specific details, but it, uh, it definitely uh, was thought out a bit, and the whole point of who, of who remembers and whether they remember 
was actually part of the uh, development of the time travel system in that particular universe. I believe that was a time diver stuff by Maud Desset. Uh, other stories uh, will come along and they'll just say that the timeline is immutable and if you went back in time it means you've always gone back in time and whatever you do when you go back in time you've always done. And that is, that gives you a little bit of a, a predestination uh, uh, paradox uh, effect. That's what they like to call that sort of thing in Star Trek, where you went back in time because you already went back in time. Uh, but that one's a little bit, you know, it gives you a little bit of the heebie-jeebies because then it, it makes it feel like you don't actually have free will your characters don't have free will in their universe because they, if they went back in time, it means they have to have gone back in time. It means they always will go back in time. And that means they don't have a choice in the matter. And that means free will obviously cannot exist. Now, it's arguable that even in the real world that we live in, that free will doesn't strictly exist. Uh, although... Uh, it's it's looking more like the universe is a lot more random than uh, than people would like, and that causality only sort of works at the macro level. But it still uh, it it does follow that if you have that, then you have that have to deal with that issue of at least in your own mind of who has free will and. What does this time travel situation do with that? Uh, now, of course, uh, you can also have the situation where going back in time actually branches the timeline, and that's done to great effect in uh, some some stories. I believe, uh, uh, what was it called? Deja Vu, I think, as a movie where they they did that. It uh, and. and and it worked very, very well. That story was very well told. And I don't recall any substantial uh, logical flaws with the time travel. Uh, that doesn't mean there aren't any. Uh, I wasn't watching it really carefully, but it hangs together really well. And, and it, it's even better if the main character who does the time travel actually understands what's going on even if the other characters in the show don't. Now, there's, there's other shows that almost get it right, uh, like Continuum. Uh, they claimed that they had worked out the mechanics of time travel right from the start, but the way the show developed over time, it's not clear they had. What we do know is that all the information we have about how time works in Continuum comes from unreliable narrators. Uh, so uh, all of them that are explaining things had some vested interest in their explanation being accepted, whether they believed it or not. And that made a real mess of Continuum uh, to the point where there's several parallel timelines and uh, all of that stuff and it's not clear exactly what the, uh, the end result of all of this is. And the show was actually cancelled before they could really get into nailing everything down for the viewers. Uh, with the abbreviated final season, they didn't have the time to deal with all of the outstanding plot threads. Uh, but it does seem, based on the finale, that... The, uh, the mechanics there are, if you go back in time, you branch the timeline. And there are some other details, like there are some, some people that are critical to uh, time developing, and if they're not present, then the timeline collapses somehow, and they never gave a mechanism for that. It didn't make any sense, but it, it's what they did. Uh, they also uh, 
basically uh, uh, set it up so that if you move forward in time, you go forward along the current timeline that you're you're in, you can't sidestep back to the other timeline you came from. And that gave a sort of bittersweet, semi-tragic end to the series. And quite frankly, they get credit for doing that because it was the obvious solution. It was the obvious solution that avoids a par the paradox from what they've done. So, it's... Uh, but still, it's not clear that they really had nailed down how time travel was working in that universe right at the outset. Uh, but of course, as I said, we don't have any objective information on how time travel works in that universe, except what happened to the main character, uh as she threaded through the timelines and eventually got back to the future. And speaking of back to the future, that's also an interesting uh, uh, time mechanic in that uh, changes to the past take time to catch up to the character in the, in, in, that's already in the past, but it will affect them eventually. And that uh, it's possible to actually change the timeline. Uh, and it's pretty clear that their mechanism means that the time traveler will remember the original timeline, but not the changed one. Uh, they also have some nice details in there where uh, Marty clobbers a tree, uh, and uh, what was the Twin Pine Mall at the start is now the Lone Pine Mall at the end. Uh, there's a whole lot of stuff like that in there, and it looks like, at least in Back to the Future itself, they put a little bit of thought into the time travel situation. Um, now, if you look at it carefully, it does hang together pretty well, but their mechanics of changing the timeline seems a bit illogical, but still, it's fairly consistent through all three movies. And that, you know, having it be consistent is what makes the movies hang together, what allows people to suspend the disbelief at the really dumb uh, mechanisms that are going on inside the uh, storyline. Uh, it, it, there's a couple of bits that aren't clear, and those are how exactly... Uh, Biff, old Biff, got the time machine back to Marty and the, and the dock uh, and a few things like that. But there might be some details there that I'm not remembering that actually do make it hang together. It's, but the, the story itself is actually quite, quite fun. And it's the same reason people can give Doctor Who a little bit of a pass for the timey-wimey mess. Uh, the fact that they even lampshaded it, uh, you know, it's... Um, uh, where the doctor said that it was a big ball of timey-wimey stuff. Uh, and they've kind of, that's kind of stuck. They tossed that at the wall and it's stuck there. Um, but anyway, uh, my point is there's a lot of time travel stuff that almost works. Until you discover that the whole situation only happens... Like it can only happen because of one thing that doesn't fit with the apparent theory of time. Uh, Looper actually has issues like that, uh, where if the uh, if the whole thing works the way we uh, we can, we can deduce that it works over the course of the movie, then the ending can't possibly work, or the beginning can't possibly work, or anything like that. Uh, uh, so Looper has some substantial issues. Uh, it doesn't actually make sense when you think about it. So, uh, you know, then then again, uh, a lot of it is a bit of a, a fridge, uh, you know, fridge logic moment where you don't really notice it until you're at the fridge after watching the movie, you know, getting a snack or something. 
And that's when it hits you that something didn't quite make sense. So if you're going to screw it up, that's the kind of the way you want to do it so that people can enjoy your story and then go, hey, that didn't make any sense. Uh, even better, if it's not going to make any sense, work that in uh, and come up with some sort of explanation for that. If you're going to tell a time travel story, you're obviously going to have some logical issues there that you have to work out. You're going to have to make sure that what the characters do makes sense and, and that the causality isn't violated so badly that things can't happen. So if things aren't going to make sense, then build a mechanism in and drop a word or two here or there that kind of lets on that there is more going on. Like, take a look at The Flash. Uh, I'm talking about the CW show, The Flash. Um, and the, the messing around with time travel they do there. A lot of people think that that's done particularly badly. And it does have issues in that uh, it doesn't actually explain how... Uh, what happens when you change the timeline. Uh, but... They did have an episode in season two where you get the you get a, an explanation that the speed force is actually something conscious and that it could be uh, affecting things and and allowing things to behave kind of the way they do. And if that's the case, then it means that there's actually uh, some sort of agency outside of the characters that are messing with time that can affect how time operates. Now, that's leaving aside the uh, Legends of Tomorrow bit, uh, but that also, uh, you know, it's in the same universe, so that also allows for the situation uh, of uh, additional uh, actors in the uh, universe that have some ability to operate outside of the regular time stream and that there's some other time stream there that uh, can allow these uh, messy uh, situations to actually happen without completely eliminating causality. So that is enough that you can sort of kind of make up your own explanation on how it could work. Now, that doesn't mean that the producers have any idea how it works, but there's enough there that it can sort of uh, make sense. Uh, and of course, the whole, the whole thing is based on comic books, so comic book logic applies as well. Uh, anyway, uh, the whole point here is that if you're going to write a time travel story, you can't just start out and throw words at the page. You have to do some planning. You have to do some planning much more so with a time travel story than you do with any other kind of story. Now, you do have to make sure that any story logically follows the characters behave consistently and all of that. But with time travel, you have to be even more careful, especially if the time that the characters are traveling to is close enough to their time that either when they get home they can affect the time they went to or that they're affecting their own time for going back in time. You can sidestep that uh, neatly in a lot of cases by having uh, people go from uh, now to the pre-Stone Age or uh, going to the far, far future where it's, you know, basically where records of what's gone on aren't really available. So you can't really affect anything uh, with foreknowledge. And that, that can actually sidestep a lot of things because then you can go with the, well, you know, the two possibilities. One, time can't be affected. The timeline can't be affected. So you have predestination. Or... Any changes will settle down over a distance on the timeline. And if you do manage to change something, it won't affect the time you went to or the time you're from. So, uh, and that's been done in uh, some stories as well. 
So there's a lot of possible mechanisms for uh, keeping everything consistent. And you'll note I haven't talked about the mechanism for actually traveling in time. And the reason I haven't is that doesn't really matter. The mechanism you use to travel in time, while it can cause some hijinks, having something appear out of nowhere if you're traveling in a, in a time ship or, uh, or what have you, uh, the exact mechanism for traveling in time doesn't really matter. The, the problems exist no matter what mechanism you use. It's still, you need to have a sensible mechanism for traveling in time, something consistent in your universe. Uh, you know, magic and a fantasy, uh, some sort of uh, uh, wonderful device in science fiction like the time machine in H.G. Wells' story. Uh, it's, uh, it's, all, uh, it's all stuff that you can, can make work. Oh, there's one other thing that you have to deal with in a time travel story, uh, at, at least if you're dealing with a science fiction setting that you want it to behave a little bit like uh, our real universe, you have to keep in mind that everything is moving. So if I were to step out of time right here where I'm, I'm making this video and then step back into time... Uh, an hour later without moving in space and keeping the same momentum that I had when I stepped out of time, which means I'm moving in the same direction and all of that, that jazz. When I pop back into time an hour later, I won't be on the earth. I'll be sitting in space somewhere because the earth will have moved on in its orbit around the sun. The sun will have moved on in its orbit around the galaxy. The galaxy will have moved on in its path uh, th uh, through uh, probably through the uh, local galactic cluster and and all of this is moving through space and space itself is expanding and in general you need to ha you need to keep in mind that uh, time travel has to have a mechanism for accounting for the movement of uh, celestial bodies and so on so that you actually arrive where you intend to. Anyway, uh, that, that's a relatively minor bit. Uh, you can, uh, you know, a couple words about it and you can just, and for the most part, you can take it as read that the fancy machine deals with that or uh, that the magic for traveling in time uh, deals with that if your fantasy universe has similar celestial mechanics. Anyway, as you can see, uh, time travel stories are difficult to write well, and it's something that you should be really wary of uh, starting uh, if you haven't actually done a lot of careful planning for the plot. This is, this is the key, like where you can sort of do a discovery type uh, story writing process for a typical story like a mystery or whatever where you have one timeline where you've got interacting timelines you actually have to have it planned out carefully or things will fail or, or you know things will f will not hang together quite properly. Anyway uh, this is a huge topic and there's a lot of discussion on the interwebs about uh, you know this sort of thing if you uh, uh, manage to find the right uh, incantation to put into uh, into your favorite search engine uh, so uh, oh and I should say don't let this discourage you from actually writing a time travel story if it's what you really want to do just make sure you plan it carefully Anyway, that's all I'm going to say at this point on the topic of time travel fiction. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.